क्वेश्चन नंबर वन चार्ज क्यू टू क्यू एंड फोर क्यू आर यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन थ्री डायरेक्टिव सॉलिड स्फेयर सो वी हैव थ्री सॉलिड स्फेयर एंड चार्ज क्यू टू क्यू एंड फोर क्यू इज यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड सो इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड वी हैव टू फाइंड इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड एट पॉइंट पी सो हियर पॉइंट पी इज आउटसाइड द स्फेयर सो इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ई वन विल बी वॉट के क्यू डिवाइडेड बाई आर स्क्वायर इन सेकेंड केस Point P is at the surface, so electric field E two will be your K charge is two uh, Q divided by R square. And in case three, point P is inside uh, the sphere, so electric field E three will be your K and charge is your four Q divided by radius is two R two R to the power Q into that is R. So E three will be your K Q divided by two R square. So we can say that maximum value is uh, maximum value of electric field is E one. Um, uh, maximum value is E two, then E one, and then E three. So we can say that E two is greater than E one, and it is greater than E three, hence the answer will be your option number C. Question number two: A glass capillary tube is of the shape of a truncated cone with the apex angle alpha, so that its two ends have cross section of different radii. So we have a glass tube in conical shape, and liquid has risen up by height h. So here the contact angle is given to that is theta. So this angle is your theta, and uh, Half angle of this cone will be your uh, alpha by two. So this angle is your alpha divided by two. If this is angle is alpha by two, then this angle will uh, will also be alpha by two. So this whole angle will be theta plus alpha by two. This is my theta plus alpha by two. Then this will be ninety minus theta plus alpha by two. Hence this angle will be your theta plus alpha by two. so in this triangle in this triangle we can say that cos of theta plus alpha by 2 that is equal to b divided by r so from here we can get the value of r and r is your b divided by cos theta plus alpha by 2 so we have mentioned some points point a at point a pressure will be your p atmosphere that is let's say p not where p not is the atmosphere pressure At point P, as we move from concave to convex side, pressure decreases. It will become P naught minus two S divided by capital R, where S is surface tension and R is the radius of curvature. And at point C, pressure will be your pressure at point B plus rho G H, and it is same as the pressure P naught because point C and here let's say point D are at the same level. The pressure at point D will be same as pressure at point C. By putting the value of uh, P B, that is P naught plus P naught minus two S divided by R plus rho G H is equal to P naught. P naught and P naught will cancel out. So height H will become two S divided by rho G, and we have the value of R, that is B divided by Cos theta plus alpha by two. Hence, the answer will be your option number D. Question number three: We have to find uh, the ratio of wavelength of copper and molybdenum. So we know that the formula is root of C divided by lambda is equal to A Z minus B. For K alpha line, B is equal to one. It is for K alpha for K alpha B is equal to one, so we have to find the ratio lambda Cu divided by lambda molybdenum. That will become Z of molybdenum minus one divided by Z of copper minus one to the power two. After putting the value, Z of molybdenum is given to that is forty two, forty two minus one divided by twenty nine minus one. To the power two, and after solving, we will get 
2.14 hence the answer will be your option number b question number 4 a planet of radius r is equal to 1 by 10 of radius of earth has the same mass density as that of earth the density is same as that of earth scientists dig a well of depth r by 5 on it and lower a wire of same length and of linear mass density that is 10 to power minus 3 so we have to find force acting on this wire so force acting on the wire let's say df will be your eg into dm eg is the gravitational field it will be your 4 pi g rho small r divided by 3 and dm will be your lambda into dr so we have to integrate it and limit will be from 4 r by 5 to capital r where capital r the radius of that planet after solving it we will get the value of force f that will be 108 newton question number 5 a tennis ball has dropped from some height h as the ball comes down its velocity will become v is equal to gt velocity is a function of time we know that kinetic energy k is your half m v square that means k is proportional to t square so kinetic energy is proportional to t square hence the graph will be upward parabolic the graph will be upward parabolic and during compression the velocity will become zero so gradually it will become zero and when it will bounce back it will gain again the same velocity and as it go up as it goes up its velocity decreases and finally it, it become zero hence the option will be your b question number 6 it's on photoelectric equation of einstein <coughs> uh, they've given the ratio of speeds and they've asked you to find out the work function so you would go by this equation k okay, max equals h c by lambda minus phi if we take ratio of the two data given we would have something like this well uh, they've given you the ratio of speeds as 2 is to 1 that gets you the ratio of k1 by k2 as 4 by 1 upon solving this equation where lambda 1 and lambda 2 are mentioned straight away you get the value for phi as closest answer being 3.7 ev that's it okay so as the beast beat slides down it goes on acquiring velocity starting from zero velocity let's assume at some angle theta it has a speed v if you write the force equation we have mg cos theta minus n equals mv square by r but if you apply work energy theorem at the initial point and the given point we could write it as mgr 1 minus cos theta that's the work done by gravity normal is doing no work since it is perpendicular to the displacement so work done by gravity goes into kinetic energy well on solving these two and putting n equals to 0 we get a transition this this uh, the diagram that i have drawn is the fbd for the bead here now putting n equals to 0 we find that cos theta is 2 by 3 so there's this particular angle when normal becomes zero at angles before this on the bead normal reaction is supposed to act outwards and after this the normal reaction is supposed to act inwards on the bead again that's because at positions before this theta that is for, for which cos theta is 2 by 3 the speed is less so lesser force is required to give centripetal acceleration so mg cos theta minus n would be so adjusted that n has to act outwards on the bead similarly going on to the next part normal reaction would be acting inwards providing it the necessary centripetal acceleration which is the enhanced amount now because of this transition point before and after you have this reversal of normal reaction now, interestingly they've asked the force exerted by the bead on the rod so on the on the uh, ring that the bead is moving on, which means it has to be just the opposite so once we are on positions before this theta 
the bead is applying normal reactions inward and when it's once uh, it's it's crossing this theta the bead is applying the force readily outwards and that's our answer number d so the important point to be noted is that they have asked you not the normal reaction applied by a ring on the bead but the bead on the ring so it will be just opposite of what we just derived giving you the option d